Hi, everybody. It's Leah from New York. And this is Megma from India. And together we are Lightworkers, Lightworkers Lifeline. Lifeline. <laughs> oh, God. Um, just feeling so amazed and blessed to be doing this work and on this path and to have the world where it is uh, at this moment in time. It feels so good. It feels in alignment with my soul. And I hope it is feeling that way for a lot of you as well. And I know it falls in and out of this and that's our job, right? It's to breathe and try and come back into alignment to just consciously keep making those decisions on a daily basis, on a moment to moment basis. And we're not looking for perfection. We're looking for consistency and consistently moving towards the light. And that is all you need to be aware that you're doing it to feel satisfied. It should be all you need to do to feel satisfied, not perfectionism. None of us are going to arrive. That's not how yeah. I look at it. Yeah. So um, we had meant the other day to talk about when we're in alignment and when we're not in alignment and what it feels like. And I think we mostly focused on what it felt like to be in alignment. So when I am out of alignment, I can be feeling just a subtle sense of discord. It can go from a subtle sense of discord up to a much higher vibratory rate that is through my entire being that I can't necessarily pick it out, right? It's like if you strum a guitar with one note, the whole guitar vibrates with that note. Um, and that's what the stepping into not being in alignment or pushing against being in alignment feels like for me. I can have heart palpitations. I can have, you know, stomach disorder, sleeping problems, um, skin eruptions. Um, you know, your body can speak in so many ways trying to get your attention. And I think that dis-ease disease comes from you know forcing ourselves to stay out of alignment and i think that health and healing just naturally flows when we are in alignment everything flows when we're in alignment yes i totally agree with that with this physical symptoms like uh our body is always communicating with us and it is it tells us way more than we give it credit for so if you are feeling sick uh, after talking to a person or or being close to them or after going to your job on a consistent basis uh, you might need to look at it uh, in that perspective is how your body is reacting in or to the energy of that thing and when like Leah said when we push ourselves or force ourselves to function in a disaligned circumstances that is not in alignment with us our body will try to tell us by giving the signals like being anxious being extremely tired uh getting uh, mood swings or not having much control over your emotions can also dysregulation what is called can show up um well wait I had a really good point. <laughs> um, Dysregulation, uh, something to do with the emotions. No, what were you talking about in... Uh... Should I have completely lost it? Okay, well, why don't we move on? And I bet it will come back to you because that's yeah. how those things always work. And if it doesn't today, I know it will come back another time. Yeah, so, you know, everything when you're pushing yourself out of alignment 
all manner of physical ailments can manifest. And if you study this in yourself, it can also be a big clue as to other patterns that may have occurred in your life that you now have the opportunity to tweak and, you know, change. You got it? Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you for that. So um, what I have experienced and observed that uh, mostly the culture of living out of alignment happens in the form of denying ourselves of our needs, our desires, and somehow that is glorified, that is considered you are considered to be a good person if you are self-sacrificing like all the time and doing things for others. So you're denying yourself uh, a lot. So that like you can ask yourself when you're in a situation, what am I denying myself through this circumstances, through this uh, career choice or this relationship choice? So you can even ask yourself that to kind of show you how you are keeping yourself out of alignment and also be uh, aware that this is a cultural conditioning because we are vulnerable and we are weak when we are out of alignment. We are more susceptible to energy attacks for vampires to siphon out our energy and our, and we are more easily give up our control to others because we barely can function in that dissonance and we are not even uh, uh, and the genius of this trap is if you blame yourself for the dissonance you're not a good enough person if you aren't happy after you know denying yourself everything so uh, yeah that's a big one in the collective and it's a good place to start with I think yeah, I agree with you 100%. And it runs so deep, you know. Um, and again, this is why all this internal work and shadow work is so important, because so many of us don't even have a clue at what we really want or need. Because we have been, we have swallowed the pill so thoroughly that our redemption is somehow attached to serving others and denying the self. And there is no redemption in that. That is not just like guilt. There's no like redemption through feeling guilty. Feeling guilty suppresses your production of light. Um, it is not, you know, being sorry for something you've done is one thing and then moving on, right? But like learning we, forgiveness, yes, I think would be the uh, antidote for being in guilt, I believe, like learning to forgive yourself or others. And that's a very similar thing that you have to do. It's almost like you have to forgive yourself so that you can move into loving yourself enough wow. to then start stating your needs and feeling like you're important. And this is such a huge internal struggle that each of us has to come to. And I think, you know, again, it's particularly hard for women. Um, and my heart just goes out to women around the globe with this struggle and you know we really need to lift each other up yeah because this is not easy but we each have to find our value truly find our value inside and you know we're hoping that the work we're doing here is helping you with that so if you find that it is please let us know <laughs> we would love yes to hear. yeah definitely would love to hear your feedback and uh, I wanted to say another thing that, like we said in the beginning, how there could be physical symptoms of being anxious, tummy issues is a big one because it affects your seat of will, the solar plexus, and it uh, kind of shows the, you know, imbalance of how you're using your will uh, through tummy issues. The other so, symptoms also could be feeling very numb towards life. 
and not really feeling alive. And sometimes we shut down our senses or receptors to cope, which means you wouldn't be feeling very low. You may not even notice that your body is in pain or disease or discomfort because you have shut down just to function. But if you are not tingling when you are up you feel not excited about anything for days on end and you are just getting up doing your chores and going back to bed and doing that on repeat that's also could be a sign that you're not in alignment so how this alignment works and we'll cover this maybe in a different video sometimes is uh, alignment means that to be in same page with the universal intelligence and love that wants everything to go grow towards light and you know experience joy and bliss and so we don't see that entire picture as individual but we can know it from sensation so um yeah the point is to feel alive and really appreciate the life. So you know that you are in alignment when you are feeling like that. But yeah. Yeah, it's, um, and again, you know, it can be different for everybody. And this is why, you know, we can't say it enough that tuning in and and sitting with it. You know, I, I wrote a, a piece for a blog and I used an example of if you were a cave woman that suddenly found yourself transported into you know modern New York City it would be really overwhelming everything but even just like say navigating the streets would be overwhelming and it's easy to tell when there's a lot of traffic rushing by so you probably wouldn't step in front of a car then but if you stayed back and watched without anybody explaining anything to you after a few repetitions and those repetitions, the number of them would be different for different people. But you would watch that the cars started on green and kept going on green. And you'd notice that they began to slow down or speed up, which could be really confusing um, for the yellow lights. And you would notice that on the red, they stopped. You could figure out the rudimentary sort of pattern of how that worked without any input from anybody. And this is exactly how the masters from old figured out you know, all of the philosophers who, you know, Plato, Socrates, um, all of these figured life out, right? They, they discern deep truths of life because when they got to that busy intersection, they stopped and they paid attention. And we're asking you to pay attention to internal things to just when you become confused, overwhelmed, stop and pay attention. What is going on? What just happened? Did, you know, just pay attention to what's similar in these things and you will begin to learn a whole language around it. Yeah. But it definitely needs your personal curiosity and adventure of going down those paths and building your whole understanding of how your alignment works because it is so personal so it's a personal thing you know we could give you our list and you know there could well be very similar things you know like I said one of the things that shocked me the most about meeting Magma when I got to know her was that we work with energy the same way and in all of my decades of being on the planet, I have never encountered someone like that. So we understand things almost the same way, almost all the time. That is not the case most of the time. So, you know, do your own research on all of this. Yep. Thanks for checking in. We love you. And uh, we'll see you again soon. Yeah. Bye.
Bye.